the media can change anything. For example, if I ask you that how will George Bush, is he good or bad? You will say he's not good. For example, I will chop off the knot and it will sound George Bush is good. When I show you your own recording, you say, oh, by slip of the tongue, I said he's good. Actually, you didn't say that. You said he's not good. I chopped off the knot. I'll show you, see, this is, brother, you have said he's good. So you will say, okay, it was slip of the, it wasn't slip of the tongue. You wanted to say he's not good. I chopped off the knot and it sounds like he's good. So this is the media plays game. So we as Muslims, what we should do, that we should know our religion very well. We should know our deen very well. And when anyone replies, we should not be swayed by how they portray Islam. And to judge Islam, we should go to the authentic sources, the Quran and the Sai Hadith. We should not look at what Muslims do or what the Muslim society does. To judge Islam, I'm not going to judge Islam by what the people in India are doing or Pakistan or Taliban or Saudi. I'm going to judge Islam based on authentic sources, the Quran and the Sai Hadith. So this strategy we use. And when the media portrays something, we should know how to turn the tables over. See, now the person won't ask two questions. He only asked one question. Why? Because the first answer only was the thing he didn't expect. He didn't expect me to say that I'm proud of my country. He thought I will say I'm not proud of my country. I'm really proud of my country. Not that I'm telling a lie. I'm proud of India. And that is a battlefield where a mujahid Jihad, Jihad means striving. <laughs> you know, by my name, Nayak, in Sanskrit, Nayak means a warrior, a hero. So by name, I'm a Mujahid. <laughs> I have to be in the battlefield. I have to do my job. Therefore, I want to live in Bombay. People said, come here, come there. People are giving me, they're giving me offers to stay in different countries. Your life is in danger. I have to be in the battlefield. That's my battlefield. I love my country for many reasons. For many reasons. Alhamdulillah. And I'm proud of that. So therefore a Muslim should be trained in the media when they reply to turn the tables over. Hope that answers the question. Yes, sister. Assalamu alaikum, Dr. Nayak. Since I'm in the media, I think this is a very relevant question which at times has come across our mind. I'm the editor of a trade journal in Dubai. This is pertaining to actually the Al-Qaeda organization and Osama bin Laden. Uh, all of us know that when he was fighting the Russians, and he was fighting communism, and what they did in Afghanistan, he was the hero of the masses. Now, many years down the line, this particular hero has turned into a monster. We are all aware of that. Now, my particular statement is this. Journalism is supposed to be objective. It is just supposed to see, uh, report what you see. You're not supposed to infer anything. You're not supposed to come to any conclusion while reporting. And here, the Western media, they created the rules and they're breaking the rules. This is exactly what is happening. And the thrust of your lecture or for all these, uh, during these two, three hours was exactly the same. They changed the rules and play with the rules. How can we as Muslims, as peace-loving Muslims, draw the attention of the world to this thing which is happening? Like, for example, let me give you something. All the ills of the world, all the violence is blamed on Al-Qaeda. And we have heads of state giving irresponsible statements like such and such a thing, it's by Al-Qaeda. How do you think as peace-loving Muslims we counteract something which we see as which is not... I'm again talking about the rules of journalism. There is inference, there is uh, opinion. Th these things should be separate, but they are being mixed in the news and being given to us. They are being dished out on a platter to, uh, for the world exactly to believe what they believe in that Islam is a terrorist religion. Do we have some certain hadith or do we have some guidelines to show us the road and to show us the path as the to what to do now? She asked a very good question. She's in the field of journalism and she said that previously Osama bin Laden when he fought with Russia he was a hero and Osama bin Laden was created by the Americans and later on when he goes against the Americans he is called as a terrorist and as she rightly said in the rules of journalism, they have to report objectively. And they should not give the opinion, the inference is supposed to be made by the readers, not by the journalist. This is a rule, but rules are made to be broken. In America, 
freedom of speech, freedom of speech. According to me, the least freedom of speech is in America. Freedom of speech, you can speak as long as it doesn't hurt them. If you don't speak against me, you can speak what you want. But if you speak against my interest, then maybe the CIA will catch you. So according to me, it's only a big fast. It's a hogwash. Freedom of speech. Regarding a question, how should we respond? Regarding Osama bin Laden, is there any hadith, etc.? And I was asked this question in Australia a couple of years back. Consul General of USA to Perth asked me the first question. I gave a talk on terrorism and jihad. He asked me, Brother Zakir, do you agree Osama bin Laden is a terrorist? He asked me. First question. So I told to the Consul General, as far as Osama bin Laden is concerned, I haven't met him. I don't know him. I am neither his friend, neither am I his enemy. I don't know. I cannot base my judgment on what I see on the news channels, on BBC, CNN. Allah says in the Quran in Surah Hujurat, chapter number 49, verse number 6, that whenever you get information, check it up before you pass it on to the third person. So what they show on the media, on CNN and BBC, I cannot base my judgment on what I see on CNN and BBC because I know it is manipulated. Unless it's confirmed what they show is the truth. And when Yohan Dudley, when she came from Afghanistan, she was asked, what is the opinion about Al-Qaeda? You know what she said? I doubt whether Al-Qaeda exists. <laughs> so, if you are going to base on what they show about Osama bin Laden and CNN and BBC, I cannot give my judgment. Allah Allah, what is he? But CNN, which is controlled by America, I come to know from there, that they have killed thousands of Afghanis. They have attacked Iraq from their very channel. If the person owns the channel, what he shows, and is proud of it, it's confirmed what they've done is there. So if you ask me, who is terrorist number one, according to me, it is George Bush. <laughs> this I have mentioned and came as headline in the statement that Dr. Zakir Naik says he's a fundamentalist and he calls George Bush as terrorist number one. Headlines in the papers of Australia. Do you know there was a survey done recently? Recently there was a survey done in the New of Chicago. They did a survey and they gave names of three people. Three people. Number one, Osama bin Laden. Number two, Saddam Hussein. Number three, George Bush. And they did a survey in different countries, different cities, different states. That who do you consider, among Muslims and non-Muslims together, even non-Muslims, who do you consider terrorist number one? The answer was the same. The answer was common, it was George Bush. The lowest percentage was 74%. 74% of the people said George Bush was number one, and the highest was 78% said that George Bush, according to them, was terrorist number one. Not me. Fine. Maybe I was the, one of the few people who was vocal. People normally get scared to speak. Regarding the hadith, our beloved Prophet Muhammad said that if you see something wrong, stop it with your hand. If you cannot stop it with the hand, stop it with your tongue. If you cannot stop it with the tongue, the least you can do is curse in your hearts. And then you will be the lowest level of mumin. So I am very vocal. I speak the truth. Those people who Allah has given the power to stop with the hand, if they don't stop, Allah will question them. At least Allah has given them the power to speak. So I am speaking at least. I've said the same thing in UK, in front of the chief of the police, in front of the mayor. I've said in USA, I've said in Australia, I've said in Malaysia. But I said with hikmah. With hikmah. With hikmah I said.